Are you making a move from a QA to a developer role? Well, here's a question for you. Say you're the engineering manager in VMware and you're looking for someone to fill the position of a backend developer role. You get these three resumes. Who would you actually hire for the role? Resume one is a professional who has two years of experience in QA and nothing related to the job you are hiring for. Would you call Ankur for an interview? I guess not. Now let's look at resume two. Devesh has worked as a software developer and has decent experience in the skills you are looking for. You're surely going to call him, right? What about resume three? This is another QA profile, but wait. Neha has worked on a significant number of development projects outside the scope of her actual work. Interesting. Even though the resumes of Ankur and Neha are that of a QA professional, who do you think has a higher chance of getting the call for a developer role? And why do you think that? Hi, I'm Ritwik and today I am going to show you what it takes to transition from a QA to a software developer role, what you need to do at every step and some of the less known tricks that will help you get there. But before we begin, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel and let us know in the comments in how many months are you looking to make this transition. Typically for any role, the first step is to get your resume shortlisted and the next would be cracking the interview. And if you want to get through these two stages, you need a project to showcase your tech skills, deep understanding of the tech used in your project, and a strong grasp of data structures and algorithms and system design. Working on projects that demonstrate your development skills are definitely going to help you stand out and surely going to increase the chance of you transitioning into a developer role. Remember I asked you about whether you would call Ankur or Neha? What was your answer? I'm guessing that you chose Neha only because of the projects she has shown. But there's one more important major factor which makes a huge difference, which is your years of work experience. Let's see how. If you have less than five years of work experience, it's fairly simple to get a job by working on tech projects and preparing well for your interview rounds. If you're still not convinced how projects can make a difference, Remember resume two, the reality is that you're going to be competing against candidates who have worked the same number of years as you, but in a pure development role. Projects give you a fairly equal chance to get shortlisted for the role. Let me explain this in a better way. Say we have applied to 10 companies. If you had past experience in development, you would have probably got an interview call from seven out of these 10 companies. But since you're from a QA background, only because of your projects and inclination to learn, you could get shortlisted by five out of these 10 companies. Still a good chance, right? The secret here is to apply for as many companies as possible to increase the chances of you getting shortlisted. Another thing is most hiring managers are open to evaluating for the role if you show sufficient proof of work in your resume. They understand that most engineers may not have had the choice of choosing a role when they joined their first company. This is especially true when you get placed straight after college. You get trained for the job and then you're assigned to a role based on your company's plan. So once you have decided to switch to a dev role, start looking for opportunities in your current company where you can improve your coding skills. You can build tools for your team, automate tests instead of doing them manually, fix small bugs in projects. Also, when you file a bug, try to debug the code and find out where that bug is. Code as much as you can in whatever opportunities you can get. But when you're doing this, be careful not to step on the toes of your dev team. Talk to them and let them know that you're doing these things to pick up the development skills. Get their feedback on your work and ask them to guide you. They would be more than happy to help you when you approach their work this way. Additionally, if you would have done quite a bit of QA automation or SDET, where you wrote a lot of code, then it would make your transition even easier. Once you have a solid portfolio, the next step is to get ready to tackle questions thrown at you in the DSA and system design rounds. Most of the companies hire primarily through data structures and algorithms interview. If you don't know where or how to get started with your DSA prep, you can concentrate mainly on the topics in our DSA plan video. The link for the video is in the description. So this is how you can approach this transition plan. If you have less than five years of experience, and of course, if you follow this plan, you will see a significant improvement in your CTC as well. Now let's talk about what it takes to transition if you have say more than five years of work experience. Goes without saying that your first steps are to make sure you do everything mentioned in the previous case where you have less than five years of experience. If you want, you can pause here and take a quick snapshot of these points. However, when a manager sees that you're making this shift after five years of your career, they might be a little hesitant to take your application forward. They're going to wonder why you stayed in QA for over five years and they might be a little skeptical about your drive to transition to this role. 
another concern they might have is how comfortable you would be taking help and instructions from someone younger in your team. These are valid concerns, but this isn't the end of the road for you. You can prove your drive to make this transition and I'm going to show you how. And before we jump into the specifics, do drop a comment and let us know which category you fall into less than five years or more than five years of experience. And if you're stuck anywhere in the middle of your journey, reach out to us in the comment section. All right. Now we are going to look at these five simple strategies that you can use to convince your hiring manager that you are the right candidate for the developer role. Before you look for any opportunities outside, see if you can transition within your current company. Talk to your higher management and given that the functional knowledge you already have about the product. Also, most companies place high regard in their employees growth. Instead of losing a smart and dedicated employee, they would be happy to help and support your decision to help you grow in the current organization. An important tip here is when you have this conversation with your manager, be sure to agree on a rough timeline to fulfill this plan. Otherwise, they may not prioritize this decision for you. Let them know that you're picking up the development skills and are looking to transition in the next two quarters. Two quarters is a good timeline for your manager to find a replacement resource as well. Option two, look for freelancing opportunities on platform like Upwork, Turing and Topcoder. Or you can tag along with experienced freelancers to get more opportunities. Freelancing is a great way to explore the areas of work that interest you and build a strong development profile. This may even help you transition into a full-time developer role with the client you're working with. And of course, you're going to make more money on the side while learning the tricks of the trade. Third, apply for jobs in smaller companies. Such companies are more open to evaluating candidates for their skills rather than their credentials. If your skills and your experience align with their requirements, they would be ready to hire you. You'd probably earn less than what most developers with five plus years of experience ideally earn. And that's okay. The idea behind applying to smaller companies is that they usually have a smaller salary budget and would be willing to consider you if your skills align with what they are looking for. This is actually a win-win situation for both of you. So keep your eyes open for such opportunities. And when you find it, understand what they are building and how can you add value to their team. When you're about to apply, try this small trick. It could work like magic for you. In the form of demonstrating your portfolio, you can approach the company and let them know that you're ready to implement a project at no cost for a week. If they agree, you have pretty much bagged the offer. And if it doesn't work out, you can always learn from the experience for your next application. The fourth and very useful strategy that you can use is to leverage your domain knowledge. If you have spent a good number of years in insurance, banking, telecom, or any other specific domain, use it to your advantage and apply for a developer role in such companies. In some cases, companies may find a particular function of your knowledge attractive and would be willing to give you the opportunity. Last and final strategy applies to you regardless of your years of experience. Apply to as many companies as you can. Even if you're competing with developers with five plus years of experience, you can improve your chances by applying to more companies than them. At the end of the day, you just need one or two offers to make the leap your career. Whichever combination of strategies you plan to use, give yourself a good one year timeline to make this happen for you. Don't worry too much about your CTC. Focus on getting into a good developer role and within two years, you would be easily compensating for the loss. If you're earning around 15 to 20 lakhs per annum in your current role, you most likely would get a similar salary package to start with when you transition. So here's a recap of what you need to do to smoothly transition from a QA to a developer role. Build your portfolio with solid development projects. If you're looking for some interesting and free projects, check out our Cryo Projects Hub. It's a good place to start because every project there is explained from start to finish with a step-by-step -step plan. You can find a link to the Cryo Projects Hub in the description box. Other than projects, find opportunities to code as much as you can. Then strengthen your DSA and system design skills. And if you don't know where to start with DSA, watch this video to know how you can approach your DSA preparation plan. Apply to as many companies as you can. And if you have over five years of experience, do these additional things to prove that you're serious about the transition. Talk to your current manager for an internal transfer. Explore freelance opportunities. Apply to smaller companies. Leverage your domain knowledge. Hope this video has given you enough insights to help with your transition plan. If you think you learned something new that you didn't know before, show your love by liking this video. And if you want us to cover a similar transition plan from a different background, let us know below. And don't leave without subscribing if you want to stay updated with the most actionable guidance to take your tech careers to new heights.